Hello and welcome to the seventh video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own visual novel style game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be covering adding in a text box and some text. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel. You'll also find all the scripts and assets for this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now. On with the tutorial. So we've got our scene here and what's really missing is the interaction between our two characters and that can be achieved in a visual novel style in the most simplest way, a text box. Now I want to go for a nice text box which kind of encompasses the lower kind of section of the, the scene, screen, whatever you want to call it, along with our character name, a line you know, to differentiate between and also some text. And it's really, really easy to do. If we go to our canvas, so far we only have a couple of things. And remember I spoke previously about the ordering of everything in the canvas. If we move this fade screen in to the top, we'd never see it. So we kind of need to make sure that our fade scene in is always near the bottom and our text is kind of just above that because we need our text to appear over pretty much everything that we can see on the screen. So we're going to be doing a lot of jiggling around within our canvas in this tutorial to make sure everything is right. So what do we do exactly here? Well, let's go to game object. Let's go to UI and let's go to raw image. And as always, it just appears as a little block there, but let's change this to text box. And like I said, I want this to encompass the lower little section of the screen. And I want it to always be the same size as the screen. So let's change this over here, transform it, and let's select stretch on both directions. So we want it to stretch all the way across and we want it to be relative to the size of the screen going upwards. Next, what we'll do is we will drag it down here and snap it into position. So you can see the snap there, the blue line, vertical and horizontal means that is right in the corner and it's exactly how we want it. Next, let's stretch it across the screen to maybe about there. And what I'm going to do is change the color of it to black. And do you remember when we had our fade in, we played with the alpha a little bit. The alpha comes in very handy now because we can use the alpha to basically determine just how transparent, translucent, opaque our text box is. You don't have to do the exact same as me, but I feel having it just a little bit is going to be fine. So I reckon somewhere around between 50 and maybe 70. And if we press play, let's just see how that looks and see if it looks acceptable. Mm, maybe a little bit more because we can see the text box there, but I'm not convinced it is as good as it should be. Maybe we should have this as maybe 150 and see how that looks. And I think I'm going to drag it up just a little bit as well. Let's see how this looks now. Take your time with this as well, you know, you don't have to rush into this. Yeah, I think that obviously looks like there's a text box there. So next thing to do, let's add in the text of the character name. So let's go to game object. Let's go to UI and let's go to text, text mesh pro. If you're using an older version of Unity, you may not have text mesh pro. Uh, it's up to you how you want to approach this. The scripting will be a little bit different in the future. Uh, but it's predominantly the same. You don't need to worry too much about it. Uh, maybe check out some of my old tutorials for how to see how to do UI uh, in the older versions of Unity. Uh, so let's import the TMP Essentials. And what that will do is it will just bring into the Unity engine a couple of things that we need uh, as part of using text. Uh, we don't need the examples and extras, so we can close that window. And you can see new text has appeared here. So we want to bring this to maybe about there. And I want to always have this position in the same place. So I'm going to anchor it down here in the bottom left. Now, this first character who is going to speak is going to be, should we have it as Haruka or Kasumi? Uh, let's, have, uh, let's have Kasumi speak first. So character name is going to be... Kasumi. And let's add some bold to it. Let's make the text a little bit bigger. Let's have this size maybe 48 so we can clearly see the character name. Um, yeah, I think that's okay. 
We'll work with fonts later on as well, because it's, it's a very basic font. We'll make this look really cool as we go through this series anyway. Uh, so there's our character name. Let's change this up here. Rename to uh, character oh, it's char name. And I'm going to move this. Um, in fact, I'm going to bring the fade in down. I don't know why it's coupled it there. It shouldn't have done to there. So remember when I said earlier, the ordering is going to be a bit different. It now hides everything behind it. So there's our character name. Next, what I want to do is have a, like a, a line to kind of diff, you know, diffuse between the name and the text itself. So let's go to game object. Let's go to UI and let's go to raw image. Uh, I'm going to have this set right to the edge of the screen. I'm going to make it fairly long, maybe about there, but I'm also going to make it rather thin to about there. And we want to anchor this down the bottom left once again. Now, this anchoring is very important because what it will do is no matter what size your screen is, it'll always make it relative to whatever size screen you're aiming for. So, for example, right now our screen is quite small. If we were to take this and put it into 4K, we still want everything to be in the same position. You know, we don't want them to go skew if. That's why anchoring comes in very useful. Uh, so let's have this as um, splitter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the splitter onto text box uh, just for now. In fact, we'll have it on char name just for now. Or should we? No. Do you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking we should probably have all of this on our text box at some point anyway, so we can just control our text box rather than have to control multiple objects. For now, let's just have this down here, get the ordering in place. Uh, I'm going to press play and just see how this looks now. So we should have our text box, uh, character name, a little line to split between. It does seem a bit thick, so what I'm going to do is change the height to five, maybe. And let's see how that looks. Much better. I'm happy with that. So next, let's have the text that our characters are going to speak with. And what I'm going to do is take the char name, hold control, press D to duplicate. And I'm going to have this as speak text. And for now, I'm just going to bring it down to the bottom so we can see where it aligns to. Let's have it um, start there. Let's drag this out to about there. And let's change this font size. Let's have it a little bit smaller than our character name. Let's have it as maybe 38 and not bold. And we'll have this first say, I wonder where Arika has got to. She was supposed to be here. That's the very first line that one of our characters is going to say. So let's now drag that up to below splitter. So fade in is still predominant game object. And let's have a look what this looks like. Yeah, I think that'll do the trick. Again, font plays a massive part in this to make it look even better. Uh, but yeah, I think that looks fairly decent. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to quickly put these into our sequence to make them appear as, um, you know, Kasumi's come in, then she speaks, then Haruka comes in. So we're creating that sequence. Uh, before we do that, let's add everything that we just created into that text box. So char name, splitter, speak text. Let's put it into text box for now. And let's turn text box off. So next thing, let's go to our scene control object and let's go into scene 01 events. So the script up here, double click, and it will open up in Visual Studio. Now this is going to be a real quick addition to the script because all we need to do is change our timings here. And remember, this is the event that we're going for. And we put this in here, this little note. This is where our text function will go in future tutorial. Do you remember typing that? Well, this is where it comes in. So below here, what we're going to say is we're going to have text that text box appear on screen. And we also need to have a variable for it. So let's have public game object text box. 
And then here we're going to say text box dot set active true semicolon and save. Now I know this is incredibly simple what we're doing here, but we're getting the fundamentals of our text system in place now. And it just allows us to really take this further in subsequent tutorials. So heading back into Unity, let it compile. And what we'll do is we just need to add in that variable of text box to the script right there. So drag and drop and press play. So now we shouldn't see our text box. It should fade in. Assume it comes in and then speaks. And then Karika slides in. Excellent. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to add in some sound effects and we're going to add in the next line uh, that Karika will say and what Kasumi will say because we want some interaction here. Interaction is key when it comes to a visual novel. So we need like audio cues, like shock, like Kasumi being shocked because Haruka suddenly appears. So that's going to be the goal of our next tutorial. So remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial in this series. And we'll see you next time.